Hi, I'm going to take you through some real world Power BI interview questions that are open-ended and will show a recruiter or employer your depth of knowledge with Power BI. I've seen a lot of interview questions out on the net and frankly they're just test questions. An employer is not looking for you to be answering simple questions. They want you to demonstrate your depth of knowledge and using Power BI and getting the real value out of this tool. So let's get started. So the first question is, where do you think Power BI should be used the most? Analysis, visualization, or data preparation? This is going to demonstrate to an employer what your understanding of how to use Power BI is. And I've, I've received this question and given this question to potential recruits. So let's see. You should be able to answer this because Power BI does it all. So the beauty of Power BI is it allows you to create data models that are very complex. Also, the tables that are brought in the Power BI can be processed using M. And you create very complex measures using DAX. That shows an employer that you have a very well-round knowledge of all the different features that allow deep level analysis in Power BI. Make sure you mention your experience using all three of those functions in Power BI, data models, encoding, and DAX. Describe a time when Power BI limited or enhance your success on a project, you should be able to give a very detailed answer on this. Uh, and this also shows the depth of knowledge you have of the tool. Of course, you can talk about times you an analyze something when you couldn't do it in Excel, which is very important. And that should also sync up to what we talked about before, being able to create a data model in Power BI that's much more complex than simply analyzing something in a spreadsheet program. But of course, there's Power Pivot. So I'm going to talk about a time when I had issues that were the thing I do not like about Power BI. So Power BI has, has issues with exporting. Of course, there's a limitation of how many rows you can export. It does sampling. This limits a lot of your ability to kind of create a table in Power BI and export it. However, that's my biggest gripe with Power BI. Also, there's issues with the amount of detail for each graph. However, that may not be important because we don't need to see thousands and thousands of points on a graph. But those are limitations that you can talk about. A follow-up question would be, what's a wish list of changes that you would want for Power BI? I definitely would want more native charts to be in Power BI, like a Gantt chart or a histogram, more statistical charts. That would be my wish list. It may be different for you. What are the advantages of calculated columns versus calculated measures? This is a big one, and you really should know it. This is all about performance in data warehouse and a data structure philosophy. And this will really impress employer if you understand this. So taking in consideration of performance on a report model, calculated measures do not require recalculation when the model is refreshed. So when that data comes back into Power BI, as opposed to a calculated column, each time we add a calculated column to our table, it takes up space. So the philosophy here is to keep your data tall and skinny. Cal calculated columns definitely have a function. Calculated columns will allow us to filter da the data model if that is our intention. So like if we want to build a table that has a unique identifier. However, calculated columns are not needed for row level analysis. We can use an iterator function like sum x to do this. So the bottom line is calculated columns take up space, calculated measures do not. However, please remember that calculated measures do recalculate when you are accessing that visual. 
What are your go-to DAX functions for time intelligence? Every client or every employer is going to have timestamp data. So you need to know how to use time intelligence functions within Power BI. So the date add is my favorite. It's the most versatile because you can pretty much recreate everything using the date add function. For example, I often use the same time previous year, same time previous quarter. So it allows me to do that month to month, quarter to quarter, day to day analysis. You can definitely have other functions that you may want to use. What do you need for time intelligence functions? This is very important and this goes back into modeling. You need a calendar table. Why? Because a calendar table allows for continuous dates that don't have holes in them that will not have issues with the time intelligence function. This is a common follow-up question to time intelligence. What do you need? You need a calendar table. The big one. What's the difference between sum and sum x? Now, this is important concept to learn and a lot of people have issues with the iterative function sum x average x. Um, a sum, remember, aggregates the total of a single column. So it goes vertically and sums up that column. Sum x is used for an expression or a calculation that may involve multiple columns. So it goes row by row in those columns and calculates a re result. For example, if I wanted to see the total sales and I had a column for sales and then I had a column for the number of products, I would want to multiply those two columns and then get the total sum. That would give me what I am looking for. So it goes row by row and multiplies those two columns and then sums it up. That would be the example that I would give for Summit. So do you have a philosophy when creating dashboards? A very important question because um, outside of showing someone a dashboard maybe that you have in a portfolio, you will need to describe your dashboard kind of UX or design skills. I have a tiered approach where the first section provides major KPIs and answers to the top level business objectives with the lower sections or pages providing more detail and more granularity. So almost like a drill through. Max I maximize white space for readability. The main purpose of the dashboard should be discernible in five seconds of viewing. No more than five visuals per page. This is my philosophy. How do you improve the overall performance of your data models? Now, they may even say dashboards, but it's kind of along the same lines how you're going to improve this. And this references our idea of calculated columns also and it allows the recruiter to see that you understand some data warehouse philosophy so let's take a look following the tidy data philosophy column usage should be limited also star schema to limit joins will also improve the model disable unused tables for loading on the refresh also helps Use a measure as opposed to a calculated column, unless you have to. Also, using lookup tables can improve the overall functionality. This is a common question I've seen recently, and it's a question I've been tasked to ask also, because there's a desire for a Power BI developer to recreate some of the data warehousing logic in Power BI. So you might get questions about star schema. All star schema is saying that you have a fact table and your fact table may have all your quantitative knowledge, uh, quantitative data, such as your sales and your, your quantities and things of that nature. And then you have lookup tables, which me would be dimensions, 
which may be a salesperson or a, a geography table or even a calendar table. And all those tables are co connected to the main fact table in what looks like a star. However, the star shape is not important. That is just the logic that is used to describe it. Describe and give an example of a use case for row level security. Please know this. This is a very common question also. Row level security is one of the primary features in Power BI. It's one of the selling points also that gives them a slight edge over some other tools. So row level security allows you to create filters and logic in a data model to restrict access to data based on group membership. For example, creating a restrictive view access to a salesperson so they only have access to the information regarding their own customer. And then do you have past examples of dashboards that you built? I highly encourage you to create a web portfolio or a github with your dashboards in it this more than anything i think will get your foot in the door um because people like pretty dashboards even though they, even if they're not super functional but please have a portfolio that a a recruiter can view and maybe even attach it to your your um your profile when they go to a company. So here's an example of a portfolio that I have for myself. I have this and I have this on my personal website and I also have a description of why this was built and try to put the most visually pleasing because those are going to stand out. So definitely have a portfolio that you can show off that gives a indication of how you understand dashboard philosophy and how much you understand of Power BI. If you have any questions that you want to add to this, please let me know. Let's build up as many questions that, as we can that are helpful uh, because after you probably pass the interview phase, you still may have a um, quote unquote coding task, which uh, someone may ask you to build or a dashboard or do some analysis with Power BI.